although I'm hiding in here. It is quite windy, actually. <laughs> <It's quite windy. laughs> Today we have Amanda. Good morning. And Amanda runs Felix Stowe um, Sewing School. Now, I don't know if anybody out there knows of Felix Stowe Sewing School because I have spent a lot of my time mooching about on the internet and trying to find out what's going on in Felix Stowe so that we can obviously let everyone know. And I was amazed to find this because I didn't know there was a sewing school in ah. <laughs> So we're going to find out more. And it's Harry Gay Amanda. So first of all, welcome. Thank Amanda. you. How long has the sewing school been in Felix Stowe? Well, I had my official launch on the 23rd of March, so nearly two whole months. Right, okay. So I've done quite well to find You've you. done really well. I'm so impressed. Thank <laughs> you for your Googling. That's okay. That's good. And how long have you been sewing yourself? I have been sewing. So I can see by this. It's well, definitely amazing, isn't it? This, this is, is my official Felix Day Sewing School dressmaking teacher's right. outfit with my button earrings and my embroidery and I made this for my launch actually because I thought right. it was really important when people came along to the classroom that they could see, um, right. you know, get ideas for what you can do and meet me and see the kind of styling that I have and what I right. like to do as well. So, but I've been sewing I think forever. I right. had a very, very creative and talented uh, two grandmas and a mum, all of whom oh, were very crafty. I I so see. I used to spend summer and Christmas and half term holidays kind of on big projects, making, making. And um, I was reaching through uh, a big book, I found a big box of old books that I kept from my right. childhood. And I found some of my original how to make toy books. Oh. Um, and, and with sort of some of my writing scratched in the sides and stuff. And I actually remember making those as a very small child. So I think I made my first clothes when I was nine. Wow. My first mini quilt when I was ten. That was a summer holiday project. Just a lap quilt about that good, but I've still got that. So that's quite cool. And then I joined the Young Embroiderers Guild. I did a lot of textile work at home. And then when I was 16, I went to the London College of Fashion. Wow, yeah. so that's quite impressive. But that yeah, was... I mean, it was, yeah, yeah I, did, I did, I I mean, retrospect, you're not aware of it, are you, when you're a youngster, no, you're you not. kind of potter How along and do these things. Yeah, that's true. And then retro, I think, oh, no, that was actually quite cool that I did that. So I, I come from London, I used to get the tube up to Oxford Circus every day to go to college. And then after that, I went and did my degree in fashion and constructed textiles. Um, and then after that, I went to work for... Um, an old couturier called Mary Arbeed, who was, um, which was a very, very amazing kind of apprenticeship. Right, um, you were lucky. Yeah, I was really lucky actually, and they were brilliant. And then I, and then I sort of changed direction and went more into sort of fashion and art, PR and marketing. Okay. And I've, I've had a bit of an eclectic <laughs> yeah. time, really. Yeah. But it's been but that's interesting. Because you've seen it from all angles. Absolutely, yeah. yeah um, and and really sort of immerse myself both in the making but also in the sort of industry of fashion I mean at quite high end right when when I left college I used to be used principally as um sort of a pin picker they're called pin pickers because when you start you'll literally get all the oh, pins up off the floor right. he, I used to have to um cover hooks do you know a hook on an eye on the back of yes. the garment and cover them in matching thread to go before they went onto the garment and oh, at yeah. the time I was sort of thinking, well, why am I doing this? Because I've done that, and yeah. I've been college and this. But actually, it was the best. It was the best thing I could possibly have done because you immersed yourself right at the bottom stages. You saw every single process of a garment, and the right. tailors and the seamstresses that worked there were phenomenal. Right. Really, yeah. very, very talented. So that's good skills. because yeah. if you've gone to college and gone straight in there, you're not seeing what other people are having to do. Exactly. It's yeah. So it was. Start. It's almost like having another another form of education. Right. You know, I, I'm a big fan of vocational education. I, I think apprenticeships and things for some occupations are really really valuable but uh, so I, I did that um, for, for some time sort of changed about and then I got into sort of human I, I got made redundant right got had to get a job really really quickly um, and ended up working for British Rail which probably sounds really random oh, yeah. but it, it was because I was really really good at typing because oh, I was working right. in PR and marketing and I could touch yes. type and I 
back in the 80s, you could go into a recruitment oh, yeah. agency and say, time, that's it. yeah, and you could get a temping work. So that turned out to be really good because I went into human resources and training. Oh. And that's where the kind of education -y bit started coming in. And I was working with graduate engineers and sort of sorting out their training programs and things. And I thought, actually, I really like this. I really like all this sort of training and teaching malarkey. Yes. And British Rail were really, really good at offering you training. Um, and I, I trained to be an assessor. Okay. And then I thought, I really like this, and started doing voluntary work. Right. And did voluntary work at Battersea Arts Centre. Okay. And at the same time, then got a new job at the Women's Royal Voluntary Service, doing training and... PR. So it's been a sort of a bit of a wiggly route, but yeah. there, there are kind of links there. There are links you can see where everything's coming where from. Where it's coming from. Yeah, yeah. And love that. And then I thought, actually, I really, really miss my sewing and my textiles because I'd all I carried on making things and you know, I've made wedding dresses for people yes. as you know, favours yeah, and know yeah, you people and, that know me yeah. would I say, Oh Mandy, can you can you just? Yeah. So that was good. Um and I thought, no, actually I really miss it and I really, really like working with people and teaching so that's when I did a postgraduate course right. uh, to qualify as a teacher okay so I did that at the Roehampton Institute um, and qualified in design and technology and then started teaching right. so I've, I've been teaching in high schools for years and years and years right I, I know you might not be able to believe it no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that's that's obviously so you've got a lot of experience with teaching I love, that, was yeah. that still in London was that all still no 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 I um I trained in London. My husband comes from Suffolk. He comes from Leiston. Oh, right. And we wanted to move back to, to Suffolk. And um, we wanted to be able to sort of live in a lovely place. And yeah. his mum had yeah. moved to Felix. So, so we knew it a little bit. Okay. And um, we thought, well, you know, where, where can I get a job? And I started off at Farlingay. Oh, did yeah. you? Yeah. So I finished my... It used to be the case that once you'd finished your postgraduate course, you then had to have a year... It was it was called probationary teacher right. before you were I've you know signed well. off. Yes. Make sure yeah. that you were actually up to it. I mean, as you can imagine, the, the theory of classroom management yes, and the execution yes. <laughs> can sometimes be quite different. Yeah, I don't. Um, <laughs> I know it's great. No, teenagers are fantastic. They they read really, they no, it's really good working with youngsters. Is it? Yeah, it is. Good. And I think it's a myth what people say about teenagers. I think they can be really really challenging and stroppy at home. But generally, oh. the vast majority of te teenagers, they want to do well. Yes. They want to achieve, and they want people that can handle them right. and that you know your subject. And once you've gained the trust of teenagers, you've got it. they're delightful. They're absolutely right. delightful. Yes. But there are sort of certain techniques and but things that you have to do. I think that only applies to certain teachers. Like you, you obviously know how to gain their trust because I think... You know, I've, I've got quite a few teenagers, and some of them will come home, oh, there's a new teacher, and this and that. And I think you have to know how to go in and be firm, but fair, to gain yes. the respect. Yes. And then they will give you respect, won't they? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So I think that's important, and I mean, you obviously know how to. You know, it's not something you put yourself down, oh, no, it's easy. It's not. You have obviously can do that. I think the first minute with a new Means class is lot. quite critical. Right. Right. It's quite critical. <laughs> not scary. It's not scary, but it's kind of. It was always very much. I'm inviting you into my environment. Okay. This is how you are going to behave. Yes. I am in charge. Okay. And you are going to do really well. Right. And they yes. kind of think, oh well, that's quite good. Then. <laughs> so <laughs> then off we drop. Right off we go. Yeah. And it's you know, and it's fine. I mean, it's you know, there are, there are some characters cool. which make life interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can still remember quite a few of their names, oh, bet so you that's can. good. Stay with you for the rest of your life. Yeah. <laughs> so now, obviously, you're only teaching with adults. I no, no, no. I teach you teenagers can't... as well. Oh, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't give up my teens. Oh, oh no. I do um, teen pajama workshops. I do after school teens clubs. I've even got, which I'm really chuffed about. I've got a girl who is 14 right. who signed on to a six-week dressmaking for beginners course, and she's starting in September. She oh. uh, she's an absolutely stunning, scrumptious and delightful person and she has got the longest legs 
ever. Has she? Yeah. Her inside leg measurement is 35 inches. Really? Yeah, she's absolutely, she's just wonderful. But she finds it really difficult to get clothes to fit her. Of course she does. And I think that she just thought, actually, if I can make my own stuff. Yeah. And and she's just really and intelligent, really. Well, I mean, it's I'm delighted. Yeah, I'm really. delighted. So no, no, I'm not. I don't see my youngest student is nine. Oh, yeah, nice. yeah, I know. And and her granny bought her a pajama workshop as a birthday present. Right. But I can't tell you who it is because it's a surprise. I see. Yes, oh, she's that's coming quite in. The, intriguing. She's, yeah, I know. She's coming in the half term holiday. Right. On one of my pajamas in a day workshop. So she's nine, and I think my um, most mature person is probably in her 60s. Right, big age range there. Massive age range. Yeah. And it's really funny, because what I've noticed is the, pe- the people that, I get a lot of people in their 20s, 30s and 40s, okay. who weren't taught traditional dressmaking at school, there's right. an older generation of people who were taught dressmaking, but for one reason or another, either haven't done it or a bit traumatised by it at yeah. school and yeah. kind of like, right, I'm never going to do that again. That was horrendous. Yeah. You know, and, and there, there are some pretty frisky teachers that can put put you off. Yes. Which I yeah. think, I had one lady the other day and I, I almost wanted to hug her. It was so lovely. She she came along to a two-hour course that I run called Making Friends with Your Sewing Machine. Right. And we talk to them and nurture our sewing machines and we sit with them and okay. then they behave. Oh, right. <laughs> And she, she came along for two hours and, and she sent me some feedback afterwards saying, I had such a horrible time at school, oh. I, she, she, she burnt something or something had gone wrong yeah. and her teacher had really, really ticked her off about it and she was so upset about it that she'd actually, she hadn't done a lot of sewing, but she's really creative, she does loads of knitting and crochet and crafting, but not sewing, certainly not in a sewing machine. Right. And she said, so I'm going to come along and give it a whirl. And I said, come with me, come, come and yes. make friends with your sewing machine. Absolutely lovely lady. You know, she was quite nervous. Yes, of course. Yeah. And um, and because I only have five people at a time, oh, I like so to be able to give. Nice, yeah, yeah, I like to give people a lot of attention because, as an adult, you know, or, or anybody, if you're paying for a course, you want you want yes. the tuition. You want. To, I I don't want to have twenty people in a room and not no. be able to spend time. But she did her two hour course and sent me this feedback, and she said. I'm so proud because they make a little product Aww. and she took it home and I showed my husband and he was really chuffed. He bought me a sewing machine for my wedding anniversary and she, she's been so, so that is just the nicest feedback that she's she felt so com- you know confident enough yes. and then she came um, last Friday because every second Friday of the month I have an open classroom. Okay. Yeah, so for people who don't have a sewing machine yes. or people that haven't got an overlock or don't have equipment yes. or are a bit stuck yes. or need to catch up with something or they, I call them UFOs, unfinished fabric objects. <laughs> <laughs> and they come along, they have a cup of tea and a bit of cake and they come oh. on, on the second Friday of the month and then we just hang out and we do some sewing together and then I can help them if, if they, they need, need if yeah. they need, or other people just come because it's nice thing to do yeah um and she came with her brand new sewing machine and she just Aww. made the most delightful little peg bag with spotty ribbon and flowers it was so cute Aww. and honestly you would have thought that she she found gold she was so it was really nice to see because she was so pleased yeah. with what she had done yeah and it really felt i really felt like it was almost like she'd exercised some kind of demon from from her she teenage years. Had. Well, in a way. Yeah, that's... But, you know, it's funny. Uh, people, when you get people into that kind of environment of of creativity and, I mean, when I say calmness, we do have a lot of laughs as well. But it's I try. It, it's meant to be nurturing. It's meant to be fun. It's meant to be something in which you can involve yourself. And it's a, a very cathartic process. Making and sewing and creating is actually really good for your soul. It's really good for people that are stressed out or people that right, have had yeah. different, you know, yes. it's it's yeah. really good for you. And um, and I've just found that, that people have sort of been coming and, and just, they really get so much more out of it other than the actual process of learning a skill. Yes, that's just, the, you know, it's, that's only one part of it. It's like a pebble in a pond yes. and, and the yeah. kind of benefits radiate out from it. 
and I'm all in favour, really in favour. But I think it's great for for people to have that um, that opportunity. Yeah. For that outlet. For that outlet, you know, from from ladies, I've got ladies who have got very very young children, and as you know, being a mum yourself, yes, it's, you, it's important and hard work, yeah. that you have to step out from that yes, yeah. to give yourself a bit of time, and and it is about me time, but it's also I had one lady who came again actually on Friday, and she said that somebody she she'd inherited a, a sewing machine right and and hadn't been able to use it because unfortunately the person that gave it to her had passed away and she oh. felt really quite upset about it. Oh, it it right. was quite a sort of a symbolic thing and 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 she 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 brought it along on Friday and got it out and started using it and you could almost see that it that something had lifted from her she just needed that encouragement. She just needed she? to be in the right place. Yeah. yeah. And and I just I think that's wonderful. You know, if I can do that for people, you know, I I love my fashion. I love the, all the kind of frivolity of, of it yes. and the and the vintage clothing and all, and everything that goes with that. All of that is really joyful. But I think that nowadays we all run at such a fast pace. Yes. We're we all do. frantic we all the time. It's very unusual to meet somebody that says, yeah, I'm completely relaxed. <laughs> you know, most people are like, yeah. and I've got to do You're this and I'm this. Watching the time, rushing from one thing to another. Yeah, and, I, and, and for some reason, um, in, I, I suppose it's just, it's almost like occupational therapy, which used, to, which used to occur a lot, didn't it? Is that you were given something to make yes. because it calms the mind. Yes, yeah. And I think we've lost that. So I that's what you're trying to really it's one, it's one of the things, it's one of the things. I mean, you know, the fact that I've got people who are making fantastic garments, which are really well fitted and beautiful fabrics and, you know, people make, uh, they come and make vintage toys. I run handbag workshops, dressmaking, PJ workshops. Um, I do uh, vintage intensive dressmaking courses, two days intense right. vintage style dressmaking courses I'm doing Christmas craft courses oh, so it's, yeah, it's not popular, yeah it, well? it's not just about constructed textiles it's also about applique and patchwork and embroidery a right. really really broad range of courses um, and people just seem to be really into it people are really picking up aren't they, they are because you were telling me the other day how busy you are I know in touch. but that's brilliant because there's so many different reasons like we've just covered that people will want to come yeah. along. So and yeah. the age range, I think, is amazing. I know it's. I love it. I, that's one of the things that I really love yeah, is that I'm, I'm, I'm looking around and I've got some really, really, you know, y youngsters right through. I've got gentlemen. Catherine. It's not no. It's not just for ladies. Well, yes, no. I've got, well, that's yeah, good. I've got some gentlemen come, and I'm just. I mean, this one guy who said. He said, oh, the trouble I have with my trousers. Oh, my <laughs> Because it's awful, isn't it? And he said, he said, he said, do you do, um, do you do adjustments work? And I just, it's a bit kind of, oh, yes, I do. Um, but I would prefer to teach you how to do it. Yes. So yeah. he's he's come on my uh, two-hour sewing machine course, and he's coming, because I do private one-to-one -one lessons as I well. See. And he's coming along for a trouser hemming lesson. That's brilliant though, isn't it? Well, he's, yeah. always, he's always going to have to do it. And he bought himself a sewing machine as well, so that was really cool. See? Yeah. So you should be, no. you should be getting a commission here of all his sewing <laughs> No, no, I don't, no, I don't mind that, because I just think, you know, anybody that's sewing, I mean, it's, you know, there's such a broad range of skills and a broad range of, of, of things that you can make with sewing. Yes. But I just yeah. think the more people that are sewing, the better. I mean, fabricate, and the little fabric shop down at um, Beach uh, Station yes, West yeah. are really supportive of me. That's you good. know, and and um, and I, I sort of try and send traffic their way because yes. I want to support local businesses as well. Yeah, so it's, it's all that's the whole idea, yeah. isn't it? That's the whole idea. I know the schools touch on it because I have a ten-year-old and she's. I know she's come home with some certain yeah. things. So the schools are actually touching out child. I think yeah. it disappeared, didn't it? it it's and not, they, they must have brought it back a little bit now. It's not so much that it disappeared and um, the curriculum changed. So yes. what, you know, what, what, um, I mean, I'm, it was my birthday yesterday, so I'm in my oh, mid forties. Thank you. Yesterday. I'm in my mid forties, and when right. I was at school, it was still very much traditional 
sewing and dressmaking. Whereas what's happened now is um, there are still students, um, and textiles is still a very, very popular subject, but they do a lot more to do with surface decoration. Okay. And and also, I think one of the issues is that, I don't know about you, but when I was at school, you had sewing every week. Yes. And yeah, you did right. it yeah. in first, second, and third year, which is now seven, eight, and nine. And then you drop. And then yeah. you could take it for if O level if you wanted to. Yes. Whereas what happens now is a lot of design and technology is taught on a carousel. So you have six weeks of textiles, six oh, weeks of food technology, six weeks of resistant materials, which is wood, metal, and plastic. So yes. six six weeks of um, sort of electrical engineering right. and systems and yes. control and so kids are just sort of moving around so that you never as a teacher it's frustrating because you never feel that you have them for long enough yes. to really be able to practice things or extend their skills yes you can get them through a project but but, yeah I know what you're saying. but it's like anything unless you're actually returning to it and revising it and practicing it and developing that skill you know, it could be that you teach somebody textiles in the first year of year seven in first term. Yes. And then you get them again at the end of year eight for another. Well, you know, with it's a, too long, isn't it? You know, even with the most talented student and the best teacher, it's still going to be a little bit of a challenge yes. to really move them on in terms of their skills. Yes. Yeah. So I'm, I'm having a lovely time because I've got kids who come to me every single week and they're making garments. And right. they're, one, there's... Um, one girl I teach who's 10, oh. who um, has made pyjamas, bags, gypsy skirt. She made a gypsy top with, uh, with a little facing and bows. She's making, she's starting a sausage dog tonight. <laughs> um, she's done sort of, uh, she's embroidered t-shirts. Because I have her every week for two hours. She right. comes with her sister actually. Okay. And they make the same stuff. But you know, they're going home saying, people can't believe what we're making here. And I said, yeah, that's because I have you for two hours all to myself every yes. week. It's lovely. Yeah, because you can throw yourself into them. Exactly. Room. And you can really support them and just give them loads and loads of help. So right. it's, it's fantastic. And all these, I should, the sewing school, is it always running the same place? Yes, because I com I have converted one of um, the bedrooms in my house right. to a purpose-built textiles classroom. Excellent. So I've got five workstations, okay. five new Toyota sewing machines, overlockers, which which are a machine that trim and bind, so that you can you can finish things really really well, really oh, professionally. Right. Ironing boards. Excellent. Everything is set up, and so people come to. You Come know, Felix you. So Sewing School is at my house in Bath Road. Right, okay. And so it's very much in the centre as well, which is great. It's yeah, well, you can, it's loads of parking. Yes. People can get to it. And, I mean, I was, <laughs> I, I don't know whether it was naive, but I was, I've been quite overwhelmed by how popular it's been and, and people booking very, very quickly. And also, I suppose, because I only have five places at a time. Yes. You have to kind of get in there quite quick. Yes. Um, but I've got somebody coming from Stradbrook, I've got people coming from Colchester. Goodness. So that shows the need. I've got people from Felix. <laughs> <laughs> my good. homie's from Felix yeah. in my hometown. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it shows you what a need there is. Yes, I know. Without having to travel. Then it does show you that it's there's good. such a need yeah. for it. Yeah. So you've got, I assume, a website. I have. And it's um, all the W's, yes. felixdosewingschool.co.uk. Okay, we will put that on the site cool. as well. So on there, I assume people can have a look at what workshops and classes you're ready. It's got, um, I do it in two ways. I've got a list of upcoming events, so you can see what's coming up in the next few weeks. But okay. then if you go onto the courses, it's got all the courses between now and I think I've gone up to February 2014. Okay. Because I've got I've got um, a six week dressmaking for beginners course, okay. and I teach that on a Tuesday night, and then a Wednesday afternoon. Okay. And that repeats every six weeks. Right. So, that, I see. so it, at the moment I'm on week four for yes. my present students, and it will start again in June. Right. I see. And then um, that goes into July, and then and having a break start. in August, and then starting again in September, and then starting again in November and they're starting again in January, because right. there are some people who have just booked repeatedly I because see. they just want to keep coming. Oh, so, I and see. then there are other people that come for the six weeks and think, okay, well, I've, 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 I've learned how to make my 
beautiful linen shirt or whatever it happens yes. to be or my fitted garment I think I could make that garment again which is great so now I'm going to do a vintage handbag workshop or I'm right. going to learn how to make a toy or I'm you know that sort of thing yeah they um, so the 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 courses uh, I think I've got a couple of places left in September okay and then I'm booking for November and January right I'm doing um oh I'm doing an extra course in September which is called Christmas Hamper Course, which I'm oh, about. Yeah. Which means that people come every every week for six weeks and they make a new product, either to give as a gift or for their own home for Christmas. Okay. But I thought, you know what it's like? You start thinking about Christmas in November. I've never been somebody that says, oh, I've got it all finished. No, I've got friends who get everything done. And I'm yeah. always, you know, really impressed by yeah. that. But I've never managed it myself. Yeah. And so I thought, well, if I run it in September and October, it gives people a chance to then make more versions. Of course it so does. if they want to give things to their friends and family, so it's you know making applique embroidered Christmas stockings, or making a table runner, or making Christmas decorations, or tea cozies for Christmas. So people have got a chance to then make the products to, to and, and give them and exactly. Yeah. yeah and so, so I've tried to think very carefully about a broad range of different courses and workshops and different skills. So I'm doing some patchwork as well, and yeah. Okay. So then people don't need obviously a sewing machine because you've got them. No, but if they do, because some people have treated themselves to yes. a new sewing machine, and I said, no, no, bring it, bring your own sewing machine because you, you want to be able to use your own machine to get used to your own machine. Yeah, but yeah. not if it was their granny's really ancient, okay. hadn't been, hasn't been out of the box for forty years. Yeah. Uh, because I just say in the nice, in the nicest possible way, we, you, I want to get you sewing. Yes. I don't want to be <laughs> sorted yeah, out your sewing machine. Sort out yeah, and it, it's yeah. not fair on the other people. So yeah. if, if people have got a fairly new sewing machine or a sewing machine that they've had service and it's good working order, bring it along. I mean, with the making friends with your sewing machine, it's pretty well works out half and half that half the people don't have sewing machines and use the school ones, okay. and then other people have brought their sewing machines because really they don't matter. know how to use it. Okay. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. No, no, not not at all. So that's how people obviously look at the courses. Yeah. And get involved because um, we just sound really, sound really good. I'm really pleased. Are you going to come and do some sewing? I should, shouldn't I? You I should do. I, I can't say my husband can sew. Well, we send him along <laughs> as well. So, Maybe you need to if you're all as well, which is bad because she does bring things from home and it makes you feel bad because she'll bring them to school and I'm just. I've got a clue. Aww. So it does make you feel bad, actually. And well, you should so, come and open second yes, Friday of the month. Yes, that would be better. Yes. With your kit bags or her fairy wings or whatever it is that she needs to school. Yeah, and do them. Yeah. yeah. Because it's so expensive as well. I mean, a lot of people probably know us with these days at school, they have the dress up days. Yes. They work out. So I am one of those awful people that have to just go to fancy dress shops that we haven't been to. So the lady, I, I mean, I'm actually well known. Because I just have to hire them. Oh, it chuckles. Yeah, because it becomes so expensive. Yeah. But there's just no choice. If you can't do it, you can't do it. And oh, you know, look at these other children at school and their mothers have done all these beautiful, you know. So, so maybe that's oh. an idea. That is an idea. But then at least you're sorting it out. So I she's going with her stuff. So that's, that's the most wants. important that's thing. That's the most yeah. important. That's, but, yeah. um, to actually do it myself. Uh, but it's time as well, Yeah, to be honest. Yeah, it's time. But um, I would like her to get into it because she she obviously enjoys it. Yes. So I think catching her early. Yeah. You know she's just ready to go into year six. Uh, she needs to do a pajama workshop. Yeah. So I think that might be a good idea for Dan. Help us <laughs> help us socialise as well. So. <laughs> so I'm interested, and <laughs> I hope you are too. Anything you've missed, we are going to put up Amanda's contact details on the website. So you'll be able to see how to get in touch with that. And like I always say, if you struggle, ring here and we'll always get you in touch. But um, it's Felix Stoso in schools. You'll find that on the internet. Find it through our website as well. Definitely worth a visit, if only just to chat with Amanda, to be honest. Oh, yes, and I always give people a lovely cup of tea and a piece of homemade cake. Well, that's Because that's very important as well. Oh. Sold. <laughs> I should have bought some round because I had a little chat and a couple of times. Yeah, well, that's, that's a good reason for us to go and visit. So <laughs> we hope you see you down there and Amanda sees you down there. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you again soon. Thank, Thank you. you.